Hey there, folks. I hope I'm going live here. I just had a great discussion with a new friend, and we got into the topic of special interests, especially around kids on the autism spectrum. And I was reminded of this skill that a lot of kids have that are on the spectrum, and that is in terms of memory and sequencing. Remembering all the presidents in order, remembering all of the dinosaurs, remembering every kind of train, that kind of thing. And in some cases, it just seems like this neat little trick, this neat skill. It's nothing I've ever possessed. And in some cases, it's not understood why this is the case. You know, why some kids on the spectrum can get so drawn into these things and insist on having all the latest information on trains and insist on talking about it all the time and insist on asking questions like, hey, you know who this number of president was or that number of president was and being almost pesty about it. And so I explained to this person why I believed it was the case, why people on the spectrum are obsessed with these things and have these special interests. And it was something this person had never heard before. So I figured, well, maybe I should share this. So being somebody on the spectrum myself and having kids on the spectrum, this is my understanding of it. Also, as somebody with a social work background, I can offer the psych psychological perspective as well. Speaking psychologically, there's something called attachment theory, which is the idea of how we form attachments early on in life with our caregivers. Uh, specifically, there's something referred to as the secure base. You see it with little kids on the playground. They'll, little toddlers, they'll, the mom will be on the, the bench and then the kid will walk away from mom but then look back to make sure mom is still watching them, to make sure mom still knows that they're okay and mom is there to rescue them if something happens. If mom looks away, then the kid will run back and touch mom's leg to get mom's attention again to make sure that they're still safe. Okay, when it comes to kids on the autism spectrum, they have difficulty making attachments. That's one of the hallmarks of autism, difficulty connecting with other people. Well, problem is, we still need a secure base because we're still human beings who need to feel safe and secure in this world. Myself as a baby, my mom told me that I screamed from day one. I was almost impossible to console. She would have to carry me around in some kind of a papoose, whatever they made in those days, to do her house chores. When they went out her and my dad went out on dates or whatever, I'd have to go with. The babysitter would watch my siblings, but I couldn't stay home because I would cry, bloody murder, meltdown the whole time. I couldn't stand to be away. I was not securely attached. So what you do with kids under those circumstances, what do those kids do? How do they manage? Because if they don't feel securely attached, they don't have that one constant. The go-to person they feel like that if the world is chaotic, if there's nothing else they can count on in the world, what's the one thing they can count on? It isn't a person because they haven't securely attached to a person, but they need something that is a constant. What can they count on? Well, there's this whole collection of things called dinosaurs. If I remember them in order, does that order ever change? No. If I remember the species of dinosaurs, does those names ever change? No. How about this list of presidents? Does this sequence ever get different? No, sequence stays the same. Do the order of the names of presidents ever change? Nope, same every single time. So I wonder if I feel insecure in the world and I feel anxious if I needed to feel like there was something I could count on, I could just go back in my head and recite the names of the presidents in, over, in order, over and over again, until I felt calm. I could do the same with those dinosaurs. In fact, if I wanted to feel calm and safe and connected with another person, I could talk to them about presidents. I could talk to them about dinosaurs because I'm talking about the thing that I know is a constant, doesn't change, 
and is one thing that I can count on and I'm talking about it with somebody I'm uncertain of. You see how that works? I bring a certainty into a situation that is uncertain and hope that that creates greater certainty. So that is an important way a special interest helps people on the spectrum to not only create some kind of a bond with other people, but also create a sense of stability and safety and groundedness and certainty in a world that otherwise seems extremely confusing and disorienting. So it's not just that they're obsessive or they get preoccupied and inflexible around this weird habit or ritual. It solves a more fundamental problem for us. And it's important for you to know this so that you don't get them to just stop trying stuff. You know, stop spending so much time on model building or stop spending so much time on Legos or puzzles or whatever they're doing. You need to understand that this is a survival mechanism. This is something that we do in order to maintain our sense of safety within a chaotic universe because we have such difficulty connecting to other people. One way to make these special interests less necessary to obsess over is to help us learn how to connect with other people. Not to the degree that we're running out and going to parties and stuff, but a few close intimate relationships can make a huge difference. And you'll notice that we bonded and connected with others when we start to prefer them over the special interest. Now the special interest very well could become something that turns into a career, which is awesome. And we don't want to discourage that, but it's also important to have balance. You know, too much of a good thing, even a positive thing can still burn you out. So that's what we're going for as well. Well, balance, but we don't want extremes. We want more kind of middle. So I hope that made sense. I hope all this made sense. I hope it's helpful. So leave me some comments and some questions if you like. And if there's somebody you know that could benefit from this, by all means, share it with them. And until we talk next, thanks for being you.